So today we're going to start chapter 11, which covers data analysis. This is the final chapter of Math 9. Uh, it's also kind of an outlier in some ways. It doesn't really seem as much like a math chapter so much. It's going to seem a lot more like a social studies chapter, at least at times. There will be some time, of course, as you would hope from a math class where you are doing math, right? Anyway, let's get started here. So today's plan is we're just going to introduce data analysis and we're going to discuss influencing factors in data collection. So in other words, what kind of factors could go into influencing what the results of your survey might be? So if you were to give a survey, there's several different things that could skew the results a bit or at least alter what kind of results you get from it. Uh, we need to talk about what all those factors are, at least as far as we need to know in Math 9. Uh, like I already mentioned, this is our final chapter. We have one more cumulative exam and then we have a final exam after that. Cumulative exam is not going to be for a few weeks here now, so we don't have to worry about that quite yet. But just keep that in the back of your mind that the next exam we have will not just cover this, but also everything else we've covered in this course. Here we go. So this uh, last unit is far less math based. In other words, this isn't a calculation based unit. It's more of an understanding concepts relating to data and data collection unit. So basically, it's a social studies unit. Let's be honest here. There's going to be a lot of things uh, in this unit that just don't really seem like math, uh, but they still do relate because data collection is a huge part of math, of course. Uh, let's first start with a survey. I know it's a little weird doing this over a YouTube video, uh, but I want you to think very carefully about this question here. Personally, why is Mr. Scott your favorite teacher of all time? Is it because A, he's funny? Is it because B, he's nice? Is it because C, he makes learning new things easier to understand? Or is it because D, all of the above? Hmm. Pick carefully on this one. There is, there is a correct answer here. No, I'm just kidding. There isn't a correct answer here. What I want you to think about, though, is with that survey, which was, as a matter of fact, the greatest survey of all time. What were the problems with that survey? I hate to admit it, but there unfortunately were some problems with that survey. What do you think those problems could be? Well, I think obviously the survey question in itself is extremely biased, right? The fact that it's already making an assumption that I'm your favorite teacher of all time, that's unfortunately a pretty big assumption. It kind of hurts my feelings to admit that, but it is, it is sadly true. Um, the other big problem with this question is the fact that all of these answers uh, basically are just, you know, assuming that I am indeed your favorite teacher of all time. And of course, that they're also assuming that uh, even if this were true, uh, that it's not one of another reasons, right? So it's, it's just assuming it's one of these three reasons or all three. So clearly a biased survey, there were a lot of problems with it. Let's get into a little bit more technical detail as to what specific problems there could be with surveys here. So before we get into that though, another question here, a little bit less, uh, a little bit less self-centered. Uh, suppose a grocery store provided samples of Bob Bratt sausages and then gave the following survey to customers that bought them. Question is, did you buy Bob Bratt sausages because they are delicious, quick to prepare, or both? The results of the survey were six people said they are delicious, four people said they are quick to prepare, eight people though, the biggest of all three of these, said both, that they are delicious and quick to prepare. Then Bob Bratt Sausages made this claim. They said over 90% of shoppers love Bob Bratt Sausages because they taste great and save time. Hmm. Well, there's clearly some issues with that um, and we'll get into those issues here. What I'd like you to do is I'd like to copy this whole slide down. I know it's quite a bit, but you will need these things in your notes as we go forward. So copy these down and as soon as you've copied them down, we'll talk about which ones of these uh, might apply to that last question about the sausages. Anyway, hopefully you got these into your notes by this point. I know it's kind of a kind of a shame writing notes in this class, but the the uh, how many points are they here? Seven points here. Bias does it show a preference for a certain product? Language is the question easy to understand? Ethics does the survey refer to inappropriate behavior? Cost did the survey cost more than it's worth? Time slash timing is the timing of the survey appropriate? Privacy can people refuse to answer? Blah blah blah. And cultural sensitivity is the question offensive or irrelevant to certain cultural groups. If we look at these seven criteria here, if we go back to this last question um, about Bob Bratt sausages, you could probably find a way to apply one, if not more, of those seven different ways that a survey could be flawed to this question. First of all, um, I think like the very language of the survey is a little bit weird. Right now, I know it says, is the question easy to understand? And I would say the question pretty much is. But I would also argue that if you were to expand that language point a little further, there really is only one avenue that this uh, this question is getting at here. Uh, oops. Another possible thing that you could say uh, is time and timing on this one. And I would actually argue that this is one of the bigger ones with that sausage question. Uh, is the timing of the survey appropriate? 
Notice that it gave us a little bit of background here. It said this, the grocery store provided samples of the sausages and then gave the survey to the customers that bought them. There, there might be a little bit of a timing question here, right? The fact that they just bought these and they went, oh, hmm, that tastes good. Um, they're kind of put on a spot, right? Uh, another issue with this, uh, I would say, is bias, right? Now, the reason I would argue bias is a case in this question, uh, not only in the language of the question itself, it's clearly biased, but also in the fact that they only asked people that bought these, right? If they had asked people who even tried a sample and went, oh, yeah, no, never mind, that's not for me, they would have certainly gotten some different results, although the loaded question in itself is, is a whole other story, right? So if we're to go back at this, we could say that there was bias. There was some questionable language issues on this one. Um, I wouldn't say ethics because ethics has to do with like, you know, questionable behavior. I wouldn't say that's there. Uh, cost, did the survey cost more than it's worth? I wouldn't say that's applied here because again, maybe the grocery store wants to know more about the people who are buying these sausages. Uh, time and timing though is a huge one. You know, the timing of the survey, I would argue is very inappropriate in that case. It's right after you gave samples to them. Of course, they're gonna be a little bit skewed on this. Um, privacy wouldn't be a concern here because people, uh, doesn't really say, can they refuse to answer? Well, maybe they just chose not to buy the sausages, I suppose. Uh, and then if you really wanted to, you might be able to put a cultural sensitivity spin on this. That one might be a bit of a stretch. There are certain cultures that don't eat sausages. You could even say beyond culture, you could say just a lifestyle choice. People who are vegetarian or vegan certainly wouldn't be uh, included in this survey. But then again, it's only applying to the customers that bought them. So I guess really the cultural sensitivity bit on this question probably doesn't super well apply, right? If they'd asked everyone, maybe that would apply there. Uh, anyway, what I want us to do is I want us to use those data collection situation or data collection issues that I got you to copy down to identify any influencing factors, if any, in these following questions. So I'll read the question and then I'll pause or I'll get you to pause rather. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll go over what I think there might be on this one. So first question here, free samples of sunscreen are sent to every home in November and February. Uh, a mail reply card is included asking people what they think of the product and if they would use it again. What kind of issues might be with this question? Pause the video, give it a try. Okay, so I think if you read real carefully here, the fact that there's uh, November and February for sunscreen, I think the biggest one here would be timing. Uh, obviously, November and February aren't exactly the months that you'd be most uh, interested in using sunscreen, for instance. Uh, another one, uh, could be, I suppose you might even say cost, because they included a mail reply card asking people what they think of the product and if they'd use it again. So I'll write down cost could be another issue on this one. Uh, the reason I would say cost, again, is because with the time that you have, so it kind of goes in parcel with timing, with the time that you're putting this out, uh, you're probably not going to get very many responses back. So you've just wasted your money sending out all these reply cards. So the survey is not really going to be worth as much as it costs to even do the survey in the first place. If we go back to some of the other ones, you guys should have this on a page in front of you here, so it's a little easier. Um, bias, I wouldn't say there's bias necessarily in this one, because again, it's just asking them if they liked the product, not like saying why they like the product, for instance. Uh, language, we don't know really much about the language, it doesn't really say much about what the card actually asked. Uh, ethics doesn't really apply, it's not exactly inappropriate behavior. We might get into an ethics question later on. Those are pretty rare, but you know, it's usually just like, is the survey like kind of sketchy? in what it's doing kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's basically all we'll go with there. Uh, cost, we already talked, time, privacy, that's not an issue. Cultural sensitivity, probably also not really an issue here. Um, hopefully that makes some degree of sense. So I would say timing and cost. And timing, of course, is the really, really big one on that one. Cost might be a bit of a stretch. All right, here's another one. A sales representative stands in front of a display of different brands of toothpaste. He asks customers the following question. What is your favorite brand of toothpaste and for what reasons? Pause the video here and see if you can identify any influencing factors. All right, so this one I think is a little bit trickier. If we go back to our list, um, bias, does it show a preference for a certain product? I would say no on this case because they're standing in front of a display of different brands of toothpaste. That kind of indicates, you know, that they're not just preferencing one brand over another. So I wouldn't say bias is playing in here. Uh, language is the question easy to understand. I would say that's okay. So I wouldn't say that's affecting it. Ethics, there's nothing wrong with toothpaste, so I wouldn't worry there. Cost, it doesn't seem to really cost uh, anything to do this kind of a survey, unless, I mean, you might be paying this guy, but who knows what it's used for. So I wouldn't worry about cost here. Uh, time or timing, is the timing of the survey appropriate? Uh, that one, I mean, you, you might be able to stretch it here, but I, I really don't think timing is an issue here. People, like, at least I should say, every, everyone hopefully uses toothpaste. 
Um, I suppose if you have dentures or something, maybe there's something else, but I'm sure they even still use toothpaste. Like, come on, let's be real here. Um, so no, I don't think, I don't think timing is su super big of an issue here. Uh, if you look at privacy and cultural sensitivity, again, I don't think those go into play here. So I would say this is actually a fair question. I'm not seeing anything wrong with this. If you think there might be something wrong with this though, maybe put it in a comment either on this video uh, or send it out on Google Classroom. But I think that's actually a decent question. Let's try another one. A grocery store conducts a telephone survey for everyone living within 10 kilometers of the store to help them decide what types of meat products to sell. They ask the following question. Which of the following meats is your favorite? Chicken, beef, pork, or fish? Pause the video here, see if you can identify any factors. Okay, so I wouldn't say bias is playing in here. So if we were to go back to that list again, uh, bias certainly is not playing into this one because it's not really showing a preference for a certain product unless you spun it to say that maybe the bias is just towards meat. Um, you could maybe stretch that. Maybe I'll just kind of put it like this. Bias, maybe. Um, I think the biggest part of this is there isn't an E option for none, right? Or or other, I guess. I, I mean, maybe there are some other meats there. I can't really think of one off the top of my head, but um, you know, so maybe, maybe you could stretch it for bias. Uh, language, I don't think is an issue in this one. The question is easy to understand and I don't think there's anything wrong with how they worded it. It's not leaning one way or another. Uh, ethics, does the survey refer to inappropriate behavior? No, pe people eat meat, it's pretty normal. Uh, did the survey cost more than it's worth? Um, well, I mean, phoning everyone living within 10 kilometers of a store to help them decide what types of meat products to sell. I don't know, maybe, maybe the store had some issues with like they ordered too much of one type of meat and they were, they were like having to throw it away because it goes bad. I don't know, it's impossible to tell for cost on this one here. Um, time or timing, well, I mean, they could have called at any time, so no, I wouldn't say that was an issue here. Privacy, can people refuse to answer? Do they remain anonymous? There isn't, again, there isn't like a none option here, so maybe, I don't know if privacy is the best word for it, but it's just not very not, not a very fully inclusive survey. And that brings me into the last point, which I think is the big one on this one, uh, cultural sensitivity. And again, I use the word culture very loosely, I'm not just talking about like ethnic cultures or anything like that. What I'm talking about with cultural sensitivity is people who don't eat meat uh, are excluded from this kind of a survey, right? So there is a little bit of an issue with a survey here uh, in that, like I mentioned before, there's not a none option um, or even just an other option. Uh, if they at least collected that information, that might be useful, um, but it doesn't seem to provide that kind of an option here. Although you'd think realistically over a phone, uh, someone would, could just say, you know what, none, and, and you're done, but whatever, no big deal. All right, next one. I think this is one of our last ones here. Uh, watch as I eat my words. How many more are there? Never mind. Oh, my goodness. We've got several more here. There I did. I just ate my words. So a sales representative conducts a door-to-door -door survey. They ask a question, and the person receiving the survey says, I'm not interested. Thank you. The sales representative responds, why not? Ooh, why not? Your input is important and prevents the homeowner from closing the door and then repeats the question. Is there anything wrong with this survey situation? Okay, so I think clearly there are some issues with this one. Um, now it doesn't really say what the question is. It's just they're they're you know selling some sort of a product. So I wouldn't say, you know, we, we don't know off the top of our head if bias is a thing here. If they're selling just one certain kind of product, sure, maybe bias is an issue. Language, um, you could spin it that way, but again, it's like the question's probably pretty clear. Uh, I'm just going to cut right to the chase here. I think one of the biggest issues on this one is privacy. Um, when you have a survey, there should always be an option for either people to remain completely anonymous or at least choose not to like exit out of the survey here. What we're trying to really show on this kind of a question is clearly the sales representative is being pretty, uh, pretty aggressive with this one. And that's an issue with a survey. Privacy, of course, is a really big, important thing here. All right, a couple more here. Your school is under construction and is quite dusty and dirty because of it. So imagine if there's a lot of construction going on in the hallways or something. Uh, a survey is conducted regarding the cleanliness of your school. The survey has always been done every four years. Is there any issues with this survey situation we have here? Okay, so obviously, well, maybe I shouldn't say obviously, there's a, there's, there's a certain situation in this that's resulting in this survey probably getting skewed one way or another. Because the school's under construction and it's very dusty and dirty, um, that's gonna skew the results of this, of this survey here. Um, now, a survey about cleanliness is totally fair. It's, it's totally okay to be asking uh, a group of people uh, whether they think their school is clean. Um, but in this situation, because the school is under construction, there's a timing issue here, right? Yes, the survey is done every four years, but I think in this year, if this were happening, 
um, the survey probably should be postponed because you're not going to get very useful information out of it this time around. Uh, but again, it all depends on what this survey is being used for. If it was used as some way of saying like, oh, how, how good of a job are the caretakers doing? That's, that's going to be pretty mean to them on this year, right? If the school's already dusty and dirty because of construction, there's not much they can do about it. Um, yeah, they can try their best, but like at the same time, you know, there's another circumstance going on here. So timing is a big issue one here. Anyway, moving on. Uh, a sales representative sets up an online survey. If the survey is completed, the person who completed the survey gets an MP3 download of a newly released song. The company has not received permission from the song's publisher to give away the MP3 file. Is there an issue with this kind of a survey? Okay, yeah, I think this one, this is our first ethics ones, guys. All right, so ethics is the issue here. The survey question itself, we don't really know anything about, so we can't say anything about bias or language or, or, or even timing or anything. Um, but the fact that they're giving away a, a download for an MP3 of a new song uh, without the permission of the song's publisher, that's a huge ethics issue. When you're doing a survey, you have to make sure that not only the question you're asking is eth ethically reasonable, so you're not asking people to admit to um, illegal activities or anything, but also that you yourself as a survey giver um, aren't giving away uh, things that don't belong to you, right? So that includes giving a download code for an MP3 that you don't have, uh, don't have permission to do so, right? Anyway. So making better questions. Uh, this is where I'm gonna kind of push you guys to see if you can rewrite a question on your own. Uh, suppose that a company wants to build a steel mill in your community. Uh, they give the following survey. The proposed mill will provide 250 jobs and economic benefits for your community. Are you in favor of having a forward thinking steel mill in your community, yes or no? So I don't want us to identify the factors like explicitly on this one, but I want you to see, can this, this question be fixed so that it's free of any of these influencing factors that you may be spotting here? See what you can do. Okay, I'm gonna give my own shot at this. So um, hopefully you were able to identify, clearly this is a very biased question. Um, they're putting words like forward thinking steel mill and, and mentioning how many uh, jobs and benefits there's gonna be for the community, um, which whether that's true or not, it still probably doesn't belong in an actual survey question. Uh, now with surveys, often less is more here, right? So the less you have in the survey uh, and the more you just provide open-ended freedom for people to answer the survey however they wish, it's usually better. And there are certain situations where you, you do wanna restrict it a bit, but in this situation, I would say it's totally fair just to trim this question totally down to say, are you in favor? You know, I'm not gonna write it out. I'll just underline what I, what I got here. Are you in favor of having a steel mill in your community? That's basically all you really need to have in this question. Are you in favor of having a steel mill in your community? Uh, you could even alter it to say, are you in favor of having a steel mill constructed, constructed in your community? Um, yeah, that would be about it. I guess another way you could fix this, I don't know if any of you came up with this angle, uh, you could ask this question that I just constructed and then maybe list pros and cons, right? Um, you have to be really, really careful if you took this approach though, because you wouldn't want one, one side to clearly outweigh another. Um, so usually it's just best to leave that out of there altogether. Uh, but still, that would be probably a better way of uh, fixing this question so it doesn't have as many influencing factors to it. All right, that's it. Probably not exactly the most exciting or interesting lesson today, but it is still important to get a little bit of practice with this. So I recommend trying page 419, questions four to 12. Um, again, if you need any extra help, please make sure you're reaching out and asking. Uh, best of luck.